So what do multimodal AI and smaller language models mean for the enterprise? Let's talk about it. Welcome to AI Insights and Innovation, your go-to podcast for the latest news, trends, and insights in artificial intelligence, including generative AI. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek, longtime AI systems architect, and analyst at The Cube Research. Let's get into the topic. Well, this kind of came around when uh, I've gotten a lot of uh, questions about the multimodal stuff as related to uh, generative AI and generative uh, and other forms of AI in general. And it's it's kind of interesting because in looking at the use of this particular technology set, we may be able to solve uh, problems that enterprises have without uh, engaging larger generative AI systems or building LLMs, which are going to be very significant uh, and complex to build and also very expensive to train. Uh, and so in some cases, multimodal AI will be just fine for the purposes that you need to use it for as it's embedded in a business application. Let's talk about what it is. So multimodal AI and smaller language models is really a trend in the field of AI, and it's really about the ability to accept other formats other than text. It can take images, it can take video, it can take audio, uh, and then understand and convert them and make sense of it within an AI model. And so that's very handy. So it refers to a type of AI system that can process and integrate multiple types of data, hence multimodal, uh, including text, images, audio, video, like I just mentioned. And it allows you to better understand what that content is and generate responses to the content. So this allows you to perform complex tasks that involve more than one type of uh, data type simultaneously. And so chances are, if you're using one of those, I think, annoying apps which where you're taking a picture of yourself and it's going into some sort of an AI system and then a cartoon version of you is spit out on the other end, that's an example of multimodality. In other words, you're, you're sending an image into an LLM system or into a generative AI system and it's processing the image, is able to see who you are, and it's able to create another format or another representation of you and your image. And then also using a multi-modality uh, uh, kind of interface, spit out another image on the other side. So whether you know it or not, chances are if you've used multimodal models uh, as part of... Uh, as part of leveraging AI applications. And if you're leveraging chat GPT-3 um, in some of the latest releases of that technology, it's able to accept things like videos and images, um, which is handy because sometimes we're going to talk to our uh, generative AI models through chatbots, uh, but other times we want to submit an image and have it process the image. For example, uh, capabilities within chat GPT, you can kind of write what you're, uh, interface should look like for a particular application, take a picture of it, submit it to ChatGPT, and tell it to generate the HTML uh, to create a uh, screen uh, around this particular user interface you're trying to create. It'll do that for you. So we're able to take something that's written, a written image, something that's handwritten uh, drawing uh, in terms of how a user interface should look like, able to take a photo of it, submit it to uh, ChatGPT, in this case, using a multi uh, multimodal system to in, uh, to absorb the image into the technology, and it's able to spit out the HTML based on what it understands around the image. So, lots of different use cases uh, for this technology: healthcare, medical imaging, the ability uh, to look at. Uh, obviously, we deal with images like MRIs and uh, radiology images, and you're able to do diagnostic accuracy uh, checks, telemedicine capability education, interactive learning, such as uh, enhancing educational platforms by combining text images and videos to create interactive lessons. In other words, we're, we're uh, reading perhaps even the expressions of the student who is uh, looking at the uh, uh, particular lesson that's being run and see how they're responding to it. See if they're uh, at stress where we need to redo them or slow things down, we need to let, redo the lesson or slow things down or something else can be uh, adapted to. So those kinds of things are very, uh, very handy. Customer service, chatbots, and virtual assistants, we obviously know how to use those to provide more accurate and context-aware responses. So in other words, instead of just having a chatbot uh, talk to a user uh, via uh, the keyboard, uh, we're able to perhaps even submit images of a problem that we're having, you know, such as a plumbing misconfiguration, and it's able to diagnose uh, 
a problem just kind of via the image. As an example of multimodal AI. Autonomous vehicles use them, entertainment uses them, security threats and surveillance. And if you have the kind of doorbell cam that's able to recognize uh, the image, it'll tell you if it's a familiar face, it'll tell you if a package has been delivered, it will tell you, you know, what's actually going on versus just showing you the video. Uh, that's an example, or typically is going to be an example of multimodal AI. So the use cases really get into the versatility of this technology. Um, and obviously, the, the common question is going to be, how does it relate to generative AI? The reality is they're complementary, and you can use them uh, by themselves, uh, and you can use them um, uh, together. And as we just mentioned, the use cases together where we're you know, writing a diagram of the way user interface wants to work, and we're submitting that to a multimodal AI system. Obviously, it's able to understand what it is, but it's also able to pass that information off, typically in changing the modalities, uh, into a uh, generative AI system that's able to do more advanced uh, processing, more advanced inferences on the particular image that you're in there. But the reason I'm mentioning it here is because in many cases, enterprises that are using AI technology or want to use AI technology may find that multimodal AI is just fine for the particular use case that they have without having to employ a generative AI system, without having to employ an LLM. You got to remember, if we're building LLMs, very expensive if we're using our own data, very expensive if we're using our own processors, uh, very high-end systems. It takes a long time to train uh, the, uh, uh, the generative AI models. And it can be overly expensive and overly complex based on the problems we're looking to solve. And so there are instances where enterprises are going to find that multimodal AI is going to operate just fine. It does not require uh, the same size of processors. It does not require normally a GPU, which are very expensive, as you know. And it takes it's able to process things faster and it becomes a, a simpler form of AI that we can leverage for tactical use cases within particular business applications. And you, the sky's the limit. The, you know, the ability to take a picture of a farmer's field to figure out the, the hydration of that field uh, based on images that are coming in that are read by multimodal AI. And the ability to put that information directly into a watering plan, directly into, uh, you know, uh, John Deere tractors that are able to go off and, uh, and cultivate a field. So... The necessity of this is a couple of things. Number one, there's a GPU shortage out there, at least there was, uh, and they're also very expensive. So what we're trying to do is get away with doing particular tactical use cases for AI and doing so uh, on the cheap. In other words, we're not necessarily having to engage with a large language model. We're able to use a small language model in this case and do a very tactical use case of AI technology, in this case, multimodal uh, AI technology. Also, if we're processing these LLMs out on the cloud, has a tendency to be also be very expensive. So it's able to optimize architectures uh, where we're just using what we need uh, in terms of AI capabilities. And I think that's something that uh, is, is not necessarily as well known as it should be. In other words, people want to build these huge honk and very expensive uh, generative AI system, which is fine and dandy. It's able to consume information using multimodality, which is what we're talking about here, and able to produce information using multimodality, images, videos, you know, sing a song. We've all gone to chat GPT and had it write a song about us. Um, that's all well and good, but you're going to pay for that. <laughs> so there's going to be a complexity. There's going to be engineers involved. There's going to be an architect involved. There's going to be a project that has to, uh, has to go on for many months, uh, perhaps sometimes many years, to build some of these very advanced systems. And I'm finding that when I'm looking at the use cases of these things, and I'm talking to individual enterprises, that they're not necessarily uh, indicated to move into an LLM. In other words, they're, they're, they're not solving very complex problems into themselves. And in many cases... Uh, multimodal AI is going to work just fine. And really, that's kind of the core message that I'm trying to uh, provide here. So in other words, we have this type of AI that is going to be able to be used with generative AI systems and not. Uh, and in many of the tactical use cases that I'm seeing for AI, certainly when you're dealing with um, uh, multimedia things, images, data, 
uh, which is going to be a use case for lots of businesses, whether it's monitoring factory floor automation and productivity. The list goes on in terms of the number of ways in which we can use this technology. It may not require that we use generative AI. And by doing so, um, we're solving the problem with the minimum viable solution, which is going to provide us with the most optimized way to solve that particular business problem that we're looking to solve. And I think that's really kind of what it's all about. Our ability to leverage AI for a business is not having the goal of just building uh, the most uh, expensive and impressive system out there. And I've seen a lot of businesses seem to be working in that direction. But the ability to use a minimal amount of AI technology, in this case, the tactical use of AI, to solve particular business problems, which is what businesses are normally looking to solve. Um, most businesses are not going to build chat GPT and other LLMs out there. It's just not going to be uh, pra practical for them. It's too expensive, very complex. You have to keep very expensive people around, data scientists, AI engineers. Uh, but the tactical use of AI, such as multimodal systems, is going to be a more pragmatic approach. So where do you find the tools to build these things? Well, the good news is it's the same stuff that we're using to build generative AI systems. So in other words, everybody out there, most of the tools out there that can assist you in building generative AI systems, and I understand there's a big complex tool stack that comes along with the ride, can be used for creating multimodal AI systems as well. So we don't have to retrain our developers on different tool sets, even though I'm sure there are two tool sets that are uh, approaching this problem specifically. Normally, uh, if you understand how to work and build generative AI models, uh, LLMs, you're also able to build small language models and leverage multimodal AI as a, uh, a specific component of that particular tool set. So that's the good news. So we're leveraging the same tools. We're leveraging the same cloud services to build and deploy these systems. So what you need to take away from here is that utilization of this technology is not about building the most complex and expensive uh, uh, systems uh, using AI. And it's about meeting the minimum business requirements using uh, whatever technology is needed, in this case, providing tactical benefits that lead to strategic benefits. So in other words, we're not trying to over-engineer something or make it overly complex. We're just going to step up and use a particular type of AI technology, in this case, multimodal, to solve particular tactical business problems, which we're going to find is going to happen a lot of the time. So the ability to leverage this technology in tactical use cases that are attached to business processes and the ability to deploy these things as bits and pieces of applications out there, the ability to also automate things that are not automated today, the ability to read invoices, the ability to look at the pro productivity of a factory floor, the ability to look at the productivity of people in general, and the ability to look at images in different ways is going to be a pragmatic use case for this technology. And businesses need to keep that in mind. Uh, that's kind of the core message here. Well, anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also comment below. Let me know what you think and let me know what you want us to cover here on theCUBE. It's great being here. You guys be safe. Cheers.